Hey, Year 12, how's it going, guys? It's nice to see you all. Thanks for all coming. Today's going to be a short lesson just because uh, we've got a Harry Ryer assembly that's going to start. So I'll try and get the register done as quick as possible. It's nice to see that everyone's already waiting, which is amazing. Get the register done in AS assembly that's going to start, in so. record time. Let's get that done. I like it. So we've got Julian, Merrill, Hamani, Manisha, Murdo, Emmeline, Minwi, Alistair, Angel, Misha, and Oliver. We're doing amazing. Great job. That's amazing. There's Anch as well. Amazing. Right. Okay, guys. So I set you guys a homework. Today is Moles part two. I set you guys a homework. Did everyone manage to get it done? Looks like we've got everybody. Let's see if I can find your homeworks. AS calcs. So I set you guys a homework on Avogadro's number. Did everyone manage to get it done? How did it go? Yeah, it was only 12 questions, multiple, I think all multiple choice. Look at that, lovely multiple choice questions. It's nice just to talk through them and see how, how you guys got on. So it's out of 12, guys. Nice, easy, easy homework. This one, guys, kind of taking you very long. It, do you know what, though? Multiple choice is a... I've suddenly realized I'm not sharing my screen with you yet, am I? Oh, sorry. Sorry. There's Adam. Love it. Share screen. Avocado was hard. Uh, you've got to leave it out for longer, Emmeline. Yeah, if you leave it out of the fridge, don't put it in the fridge. You can cut it more easily uh, if you leave them out for a little bit. <laughs> oh, so funny. Right, okay. So, I'm dead. I am dead. Why, Manisha, why are you dead? Was it because my joke was amazing and... It's nice to see that Meryl and Sienna doing like really funny keyboard slams. Amazing. The value of avocado's constant is equal to the number of, ooh, that's clever, grams of carbon in one mole of carbon, of one mole, grams of carbon in one mole of carbon. So hang on a minute. Carbon is, ooh, it'd be nice to run each one of these, to be fair. I'll, I'll do it in red. Why not? So carbon, of course, is 12. Yeah, one mole of carbon is going to be 12 grams. Yeah, and that is going to equal avocado's number. That one is true. Times 10 to the 23. Whoops, 23. There we go. So that one, I think, is, is, that's a very good possibility. I'm going to tick A straight off the bat. The atoms, atoms in one mole of oxygen gas. Ah, that's clever. That's not correct. Because we know that in oxygen, it's diatomic, yeah? One mole of oxygen gas is 32 grams. And the number of atoms is gonna be double. So this, we know that 32 grams is equal to one mole of O2, but therefore equal to two moles of oxygen atoms. That's clever. So that would be Avogadro's constant times by two, clever. Atoms in one mole of helium gas. Ooh. That's interesting. Grams of... Oh, hang on a second. Grams of carbon. Oh, okay. That's interesting, isn't it? Atoms in one mole of helium gas. Well, helium gas um, are monatomic. And one mole is four grams. Yeah. And it said... Atoms in one mole of helium gas. Well, one mole is four grams, and that will equal that. So that's true as well. Isn't that fascinating? So it means that I've got A and C, which appear to be correct. The ions in, so A is going to now be off because they're saying that it's the grams. So it's the word grams that's throwing it off. And the grams does not equal Avogadro's number. Yeah, the grams is 12. So those two there are not equal. Yeah, those two are not equal there, guys. Like, what's the sign in maths for when it's, oh, not equal? Don't know. What's the sign in maths for not equal? Yeah, not equal. I think that's right, isn't it? So C is definitely, C is definitely correct. Atoms in one mole of helium gas. Yeah, one mole of helium gas is four grams, and the number of atoms, because it's atomic, that is going to be correct. What's the last one? Ions in one mole of sodium chloride. Ah, oh, that's clever. So sodium chloride is made of Na plus and Cl minus ions. And if I have one mole of 58.5 grams, yeah, which would equal one mole, that's one mole of NaCl. But in terms of ions, two moles 
of ions because I have both Na plus and Cl minus. Clever game. So the answer is C. Tick it if you got C, folks. C is the answer. Atoms in one mole of helium gas. Next, how many moles of ions are present? So we're running in today's lesson here because we've got V and we've got C, moles per dm cubed. Notice the centimeters cubed. We run in this, as I said to you, number of moles equals C times V over a thousand is the one you're gonna use 90% of the time. So let's run it. Concentration, 0 0.025 times by 30, all over a thousand is gonna give me moles. 0 0.025, calculator on, times by 30 divided by a thousand gives me 7.5 times 10 to the minus four. Yeah, and it says, how many moles of ions of barium hydroxide? So this is moles of barium hydroxide. Yeah, but barium hydroxide is that. And that contains three ions. Yeah, it contains three ions, folks. I'm just gonna switch it over just to make it look pretty. Looks pretty, yeah. So we're gonna multiply that number by three. So times that number by three, and I get 2.25 times 10 to the minus three moles of ions in total. Is it an option? It is indeed, it's C again. Winner, ticket if you got it. <clears throat> Next, which of the following aqueous solutions contains the greatest number of negative ions? Once again, number of moles equals C times V over a thousand because we've been given concentration, we've been given V and it's in centimeters cubed. So unfortunately, guys, we've got to run them all. Now, just to watch out, this is going to be a times by one, this is going to be a times by two, this is a times by one, and this is a times by two. If anybody is wondering why, because the question says number of negative ions, and in sodium sulfate, I have got one negative ion, which is the sulfate ion, yeah? In barium chloride, I have two negative ions, times to the chloride is times two. Potassium iodide is, of course, one negative ion, so that's just gonna be a times by one. And the nitrate, of course, zinc, two plus, and NO3 minus times by two. So we've got two of those. So we've got these little multipliers, which is quite clever, yeah? let's. Go and run these now. I'm not gonna waste your time showing all the working out. I'm just gonna give the numbers. So the first one, so C 0 0.1 times by 500, yeah, all over a thousand gives me 0, 0, nice, 0 0.05 times one. Okay, we're done. Next, yeah, we're going to do C 0 0.12 times by 250 divided by a thousand. Yeah, but then that's gonna give me 0 0.03, but I have to multiply it by two, which gives me 0 0.06, done. Next, so C 0 0.15 multiplied by 250 divided by 1,000, yeah, and then times by one, which is 0 0.0375. Yeah, you have no choice but to run this, I'm afraid. Yeah, you really don't. Divided by 1,000 gives me 0 0.05 times by two, giving me 0 0.1. So what's it ask for the greatest negative ions? And the answer is D, is my final answer. There we go. Nice. So D is my answer. Highest number, largest number. We're done. Moving on. The Avogadro's constant is, okay, so they've given us a rounded one. Hate that. Yeah. The number of atoms of 15 grams of nitrogen monoxide is. Right, okay, so number of moles equals grams over rams. How much does nitrogen monoxide weigh? Nitrogen monoxide is 14.0 plus 16.0. So that's just going to equal 30, 30.0. Yeah, don't even need my calculator for this. So that just becomes 0.5 moles, yeah, of NO. The number of atoms, there's two atoms in those molecules, so multiply that by two, is one mole, which is equal to Avogadro's constant. And the answer is B. Let's move on. It's clever, this. Good game. Good game, good game. Next, the solution contains the greatest number of chloride ions, times by three, times by two, times by one, times by two, based on the numbers of chloride ions there. 
So C1 exponential minus 2 multiplied by 10, all divided by 1,000, that's correct, gives me 1 times 10 to the minus 4, times by 3, so therefore 3 times 10 to the minus 4. Next, 1.5 exponential minus 2 multiplied by 20, times by 2, and I get, oh, that's weird. 20 multiplied by 1.5 exponential minus 2 divided by 1,000, yeah, times by 2, and I get 6 times 10 to the minus 4. It's bigger. Next, 1.5 exponential minus 2 times by 30 divided by 1,000, yeah, times by 1, 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4. Yeah, next one, 2.5 exponential minus 2 multiplied by 10 times by 2, and I get 0 0.5. No, I've stuffed up. My minus 2 hasn't come across. I've got a sticky button on my calculator. 10 times 2.5 exponential minus 2 divided by 1,000 times by 2, and I get 5 times 10 to the minus 4. And what's it asking? The greatest number, and the answer is B. Moving on. Next, the ionic equation for the reaction of aqueous hydrochloric acid is A. We're done. Nice. Yeah, we realize if you want to run that, the reason being is we know HCl splits in half and in water. Yeah, sodium hydroxide splits in half in water yeah, to form these guys. But then what's going to happen is the sodium chloride is still in solution. Yeah, but I'm going to get water. And these guys cancel out. We're done. The H plus plus OH minus goes to H2O. Nice and easy. Yeah, winner. Like it. Next. So how many ions are in 284 grams? It's even giving you the molar mass. Are you having a laugh? Oh, what? That's sucky, that is. Number of moles equals grams over rams. By the way, do you notice that this number is exactly half that number? It's always nice to try and do these things without a calculator at times. Yet yeah, we've got 284 grams over the molar mass, 142. Yep, yeah, so we're going to get an answer of two moles of sodium sulfate. So I'm going to multiply that by Avogadro's constant, 6, six exponential 23 times by 2. Gives me 1.2 times 10 to the 24. The answer is A. Moving on. Nice and easy. Question eight. What number of atoms are present in... Oh, they've been... Okay. Right. Molar goth gas volume. Uh, isn't that clever? Okay, guys. Just to let you know, we haven't covered gases yet, but actually you're in luck because this is GCSE, but with a little extension. Yeah, you guys learned at GCSE with gases V over 24. And this here is called the, the gas constant, the molar gas volume. Well, they've changed the temperature and they've given you a new molar gas volume. So you were expected to use V over 36.6. 30 That's really sneaky, that. Really sneaky. And it's even in DM cubed as well. They've been really nice. They've kept everything's perfect. So we just do 3.06. Over 30, oh, look at that. It's equal to 0.1, isn't it? 3.06 divided by 30.6 gives me 0.1. I'm still doing it on my calculator just to make sure. That's moles of gas. And then it says uh, how many atoms are present. Guys, it's a trap. It's a trap. Lots of people are going to do this. Multiply by Avogadro's constant. Yeah, but then they're going to forget that carbon dioxide is a molecule and there are three atoms in it. Yeah, so don't forget, you've got to multiply it by three. So I actually have, this is moles of CO2, and therefore, 0.3 moles of atoms multiplied by Avogadro's constant. So multiply 0.3 times six exponential 23, and I get an answer of 1.8 times 10 to the 23. Take it if you got it. Yeah, it's, that seems reasonable. Yeah, I like it. Next. Okay, what type of reaction occurs when dilute sulfuric acid reacts with barium chloride? It's a precipitation reaction. Yeah, the reason why, that, this is a clever trick, this. This is not acid-base. Lots of people are going to think it's a neutralization. 
yeah, or a displacement, yeah, but they're, and so these are the options. They can't be an oxidation, no gain in oxygen, no change in charge. But what we remember is H plus plus SO4 two minus, there's also two of those, plus BA2 plus and two Cl minuses. What I'm going to form is HCl, but that remains in solution. So two H pluses and two Cl minuses, and I form a precipitate of barium sulfate. So my ionic equation becomes that. Ba2 plus plus SO4 two minus goes to BaSO4 to solid, and it's a precipitation reaction. Reaction. There we go. Next, number 10. Avogadro's constant is numerically equal to the number of ions in one mole of sodium chloride. Nope, it's double. Atoms in one mole of hydrogen gas. Nope, it's double. Because one mole of hydrogen gas is in a pair, so the number of atoms will be twice Avogadro's constant. The electrons in one mole of helium gas. Ooh, wow, that's weird. Helium gas has got two electrons per atom. So if I have one mole of hydrogen gas, I've got twice the number of electrons. That's clever. No. Number of molecules in one mole of oxygen gas, and it is D. Tick. We're done. Next, Avogadro's constant is equal to the number of grams of element which contains atoms of that element. That's weird. I don't like this grams garbage again. Yeah, I'm going to come back to that one. Atoms contained in one mole of any element. No, that can't be true. One mole of any element. So one mole of oxygen would have twice the number because it's it'll be in molecules. B is definitely wrong. C, atoms contained in one mole of any monatomic element. That is correct. The answer is C. Let's check D. Particles, atoms, or ions, or molecules required to make one gram of a substance. What? Well, that's utter rubbish. Grams of an element which contains rubbish. The answer is C. Stupid thing. Uh, next, calculate the number of atoms in eight. Oh, that's quite nice. Okay, so number of moles equals grams over rams, and it's even given us the molar mass of dichloromethane. Yeah, that's nice of them. Over 85 it equals 0 0.1 again. 0 0.1 moles of dichloromethane. Right, now the atoms in this molecule, yeah, how many atoms do I have? Yeah, I have five. Would everyone agree? Yeah, one atom, two atoms, three atoms, four atoms, five atoms. Multiply this by five. Gives me 0 0.5 moles of atoms. Multiply that by Avogadro's constant is gonna be exactly half. I'm gonna assume it's gonna be C, but I'm still gonna run it on my calculator. Six exponential 23 times by 0 0.2. And I get three. Yeah, it's so all divide by two, either one times by 0.5 or divide by a half. Done, next. Winner, number 12, that's it. It's out of 12, folks. On the sheet, please, on the sheet. Let's go to my drive. Ooh, ooh, don't go in there. It's all my, all my booklets for GCSE. Let's go for your data. Let's see how you guys got on. Year 11 homework tracking sheet. So this was really just Avogadro's constant, really. It was, there was even a lovely half equation. There was a, ah, an ionic equation in there as well, which was kind of nice. But it's out of 12. Let's fill in the tail, let's fill in the box. So we've got um, moles. No, I'm just going to put Avogadro's number out of 12. Boom, boom, boom. I like it. Yeah, there we go. Let's see if we can make it a bit smaller. Let's wrap the text. Wrap the text. Wrap the text. There we go. Still don't like it, but whatever. Let's line it up. Let's line it up like. There we go. Oh, no, I need to do all of it. Like, line up. There we go. Oh, that's really interesting. Everyone found this much harder. By the way, these are the first time that you guys have ever seen real A-level exam questions. Every single one of those multiple choices has come from a paper. Very interesting that the numbers are much lower. Isn't that fascinating? But guys, I'm still really happy. They're hard questions, and it's always hard to do this. The more practice you get, I'm happy to make another booklet of those if you want. Can, can. I'll put those together for you guys. Uh, you guys can do them for extra. But all fun games, right?
the next time I'll give you another one of those worksheets. I'll, I'll find some more questions. Got loads of them. I'll find more questions and then you guys can have another go and we'll see that improve. Yeah. Alistair really struggled with it. Angel, good job. Six, not bad. 50%. You can get better than that. It'll improve. Can I just point you? are only two behind the, 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 the best score so far of eight. It's really good. I'm happy. Yeah. Still waiting for Misha. Still waiting for Aisha, Meryl, and Adam. Anch. It's not bad. Aisha, okay. Uh, Anch. Yeah, uh, uh, did... Okay, the question is then, did everything make sense? Uh, put it on the, on the YouTube chat, please. Yeah. How did you guys, does this all now make a bit more sense now that I've explained each one of them? Yeah, each one requires a bit of an explanation. This is where doing multiple choice in the exam is really, when you're doing practice exams, they don't explain anything. They just say, answer for four, B. You know, they don't give you any understanding as to where, that's why multiple choice are hard. Past papers are quite tricky. Students find it difficult to make improvements. That's why you've got to come and see me. Yeah, that's why you've got to come and see me. Wow, that's really interesting. No one got higher than eight. Wow, Eaton. Cool. Okay, guys, I'll set you another one of those. I'll give you another 12 to keep it exactly the same. I'll give you 12 more. I'll set that for the homework today. Yeah. Right. Okay, guys, let's go to today's lesson. Moles part two. So, okay, so title for today's lesson. We don't have a huge amount of time. I think we've got about 20 minutes, maybe even less. I think we've got less than that, haven't we? Uh, the lesson finishes. Um, see, we've got the Bahasa assembly, and that starts at 12, so I've got to make sure I'm finished 10 minutes before that. So I've only got 10 minutes. Right. Oh, is it worth doing that in 10 minutes? Okay, just really quickly, moles in solution. Now, I don't really need to do this one. Yeah, this one's easy. I've already had kind of loose discussions of it on the previous webinars. Uh, I just want to give you guys some, some questions that put this into context. Yeah, we realize that we're using a singular equation. Yeah, so number one, it's just a knowledge, the solution equation. Moles in solution, yeah, which we already know. Number of moles is gratis, ah, habit, sorry. C times by V over a thousand, yeah. The next thing is I need you guys to know your units. That is, I cannot stress the importance of units in solutions. It's recognizing your concentration, yeah. And the last one is, um, oh, I, we need to do exam questions, right. So I'll put exam cues is what I'll do, exam questions. Okay, so at this point, most students, by the way, lots of teachers refuse to reteach this. Yeah, but it really does need a discussion. The reason being is once you pick up this equation, everyone kind of thinks it's over. Well, it's not. So what we need to do is we need to backtrack a little bit back to GCSE. So the first thing is, uh, let's since we've got the equation and everyone seems to be okay with that, yeah, we've got the equation. We can kind of tick off that first one. Solution upper EQ. Yeah, we can tick off that one with that equation there. What we need to talk about is units. Yeah, units. So the problem is concentration. That is the main problem. Yeah, concentration in chemistry, in chem, is most commonly most commonly measured, commonly measured in moles per dm cubed. Now, this is where it deviates from A-level because you guys learned this here is GC, this is GCSE. Unfortunately, guys, this is dead. The reason being is in reality, that unit translates to this. Yeah, the, the slash, the slash that we are commonly associating at GCA as the word per, yeah, is not the word per, that's garbage. What this actually is, is divide by, yeah? Now you, you're no longer at GCSE, sorry, at A-level chem, you are no longer allowed to write your units like this. 
The reason being is it is incomplete. What you now need to do is bring up and remove the per as a slash. What we now need to do in the A-level units, and this is called the reciprocal, yeah? What we can do is we can transform this in mathematics to moles multiplied by one over the dm cubed. And the therefore it's the reciprocal. So you're going to end up with a new unit. So your final units for A-level, and this is where moles per dm cubed now becomes A-level at moles per dm cubed. You now take the power. This is the reciprocal of the power. Yeah, instead of doing a standard three, at GCSE, you've always had it as a three like this. But now you can't do it. You've got to give it the minus three, yeah, because it's the reciprocal because you're removing that divide sign. This now is your true units, yeah, unit of conch. Right, oh, units of concentration. Right, so this is the one that you're getting. Now, you guys need to know this and recognize this. Learn that. You're going to see it, and you need to go, this needs to scream. When you see that unit, you need to have my alarm bells in your head just going, concentration. That's what you need to have go off in your head. Yeah, you see that unit, you think concentration. Okay, however, there is a less commonly common unit used. So we also get uh, chemistry, chemists sometimes, sometimes measure concentration in dot, 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 grams per dm cube. The slash has gone. This is your second unit. Yeah. So now I'm just going to let you know that these two units are going to make up, these two units make up 99% of the questions you're going to get in your exam. 99% of exam cues. Well, everyone's now going, hang on a sec, 99 is not 100. That's because I have seen one or two questions. Oddities. Yeah. Oddities in the in the conch world. Oddities. Milligrams per liter per dm cubed. I it, I have seen it. Yeah, I kid you not. I have seen milligrams. Never seen micro, but I have seen milli. I've seen that about three times over the course of 15 years of teaching. And you know what? I incorporated into my lesson the year after it appeared. And all the kids came out going, sir, what do I do with milligrams per liter? And I'm like, oh, God, divide by a thousand, put it into grams. And they were like, oh, I didn't do that. So just to be aware. OK, so the next thing we now have to talk about is how do you move between units? Yeah. So grams per liter, by the way, per dm cubed versus moles per dm cubed. Now, you did this at GCSE. How do you move between the two of them? Well, if I get give you if I give you a question and I tell you I've got sodium chloride solution aqueous and I have 10 grams per dm cubed, how do I now move to moles per dm cubed? Well, it's not as complicated as it sounds. The reason being is because the only thing that has actually changed is the grams to grams to moles. The DM has remained the same. What that means is we don't need to do the conversion for that. We can just leave it in place. So if I want to do 10 grams per DM cubed to moles per DM cubed, I just do number of moles is grams over rounds. Yeah, I've been given 10 grams in a liter. Yeah, I can work out the relative molecular mass, so therefore the moles is 10 grams over sodium chloride's relative formula mass. Remember, formula mass, not molecular mass, because it's ionic. So sodium is 23.0, chlorine is 35.5, it is over 58.5. Grams over rams, 10 divided by 50, oh, calculator, 10 divided by 58.5, 
and I get a moles per dm cubed of 0.171, three sig fig. We don't need to convert the dm because it's still there. Right, let's do the next question where we incorporate the dm. Yeah, so what then happens, question number two, let's say I'm given uh, sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid, um, and then we go, let's say we do, and it's a solution, of course. Yeah, I'm going to do 25, no, that's quite a lot, actually, 5 grams per centimeter cubed. Oh, now that's, a, that's now troublesome, because what I now need to do is I need to get it to dm, to gram, to moles, moles per liter. The per comes in the minus. So now I've got a two-step process. The first thing I need to do is this is one centimeter cubed to a liter. So how do I go from one, from a centimeter, which is tiny centimeter cubed is so tiny, up to a liter? You guys know how to do this. This is easy. Yeah, times by a thousand. So you realize that, or you're going to do this in a two-step process. Yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to convert it to grams per liter first, yeah, and then convert to moles per liter. So first of all, to go from centimeters to dm, we're going to times it by a thousand. So this is now five thousand grams. I realized I should have made it way way smaller. Oops, five thousand grams per liter. That's five kilos in a liter. That's stupid. I should have gone uh, 0 0.05. That would have been better. Let's do that because it's still because otherwise it's just stupid. Yeah, 0 0.05 times a thousand is going to give me 50 grams in a liter. Now I convert from grams to moles by number of moles equals grams over rams. Yeah, and I've got 50 grams over sulfuric acid and it's rums relative molecular mass because it's a molecule. Sulfuric acid is hydrogen is 1.0 times two plus sulfur at 32.1. Ooh, ooh, sulfur's appeared. I think it's 32, A level, 32.1. Yes, there's sulfur at 32.1. That's always, that's where I start getting a little bit muddled up every now and again. Yeah, so plus 32.1 plus 16 times four. So I get 98.1 now, guys. Very easy to make that mistake. So 50 divided by answer, and I get a final answer of, let's give myself a bit of space, 0 0.510 moles per dm cubed. So these questions of moving between units, yeah, is so important because they do this all the time. And they're usually incorporated into other questions, which makes it even harder. Now, that actually brings me to the end of my lesson today, which is perfect because we've got 10 minutes until the Harry Ryer assembly. And I think we probably ought to leave it at that point. But we've covered concentration. I don't need to do C times V over 1,000. You guys already have it. You just need to be talked through your units. And we are now done. So I will set you questions where units are being done. Again, they'll probably be multiple choice. You will see them and you'll see how hard they can be. They're very clever. Yeah, uh, I'm tempted to show you one more question because there was one question. Oh, I won't be able to find it as quick as I want to. Um, where would I find it? Uh, oh, I'm going to try and search for it. Nobody got higher than eight on those multiple choice. Fascinating. Uh, Google, I wonder if you can find this in less than 10 minutes. Um, oh, it was ethanol in blood uh, chemistry exam or uh, exam question images I won't be able to find it it was a really really lovely question from one of the A level papers I'll find it and I'll send it I'll give it to you on the homework sheet guys I'm going to end the lesson there today because it needs to be a short one I will go ahead sir <laughs> I could try tracing through it I really want to try and find that I probably wouldn't take me as long as I think. It's going to be on one of my things. I can probably search my files, actually. Um, anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you guys be. Have a great rest of your day. It's been great to see you guys. I'll send you the questions on the homework on the sheet, and I will see you guys.
uh, next week. See you later, guys.